Robert, I was recently having a conversation with someone that they want to see all seven continents, and the only one that they're missing is Antarctica. You do not want to go to Antarctica, right? I don't really want to go to any continent. I don't. I barely want to be in North America. <laughs> well, I definitely wouldn't say I want to go to Antarctica. What would it take for me to convince you to go to Antarctica? Money. I, I would. I would accept a small cash sum to go to Antarctica with you. Do I have to go with you? Can I just send you off? No, I'm not going to go alone. <laughs> I mean, we no, conquered no, you, Japan you, together. We can go to Antarctica. Okay, okay. I'm trying to think of the appeal of Antarctica itself. Can I entice you with penguins? No, I can see that at the Bronx Zoo. What if you could play with the penguins? You could you could go sliding down an uh, icy slope with a penguin in your I don't lap. think there are slopes. I think Antarctica is completely flat. Whatever. You could, <laughs> you, could, you could play hockey with the penguins on an ice rink. I could do that in Pittsburgh. Honestly, everything you're saying can be easily negated. <laughs> That's a different kind of penguin, Robert. <laughs> Irrelevant detail. So, I, there's, why, okay, why would you want to go to Antarctica? You, do you have any desire to sit in ice and sunlight all day? I would, I would go to say that I did it and just to like see that this kind of place exists. But the, the part that kind of deters me besides it's so expensive is that when you get there, you have to kind of chill there for like two weeks. Like you can't just pop in and pop out. It's it's such a journey that you kind of have to settle in. And I'm like, there's no internet. It's going to be cold as fuck. I don't do well in the cold. Ultimately, your reasoning is completely narcissistic. It's that I want to do it to say that I did it. No, not to say that I did it for myself. Not to be like, hey, guys, by the way, did, did you know I've been to Antarctica? That's, that's Yeah, but not you know I'm you would doing. bring it up in conversation constantly. I, would I mean, not. you don't go all the way to. So you're going to Antarctica and not telling anyone. You're just going for you. If it That's comes ridiculous. into conversation, like, oh, have you traveled anywhere recently? I can mention it, but like... Actually, know. about seven years ago, <laughs> I went to Antarctica. I would not do that. <laughs> Where did I go, like, a few months ago? And you're like, you didn't tell me you did that. Yeah, but I, I think I, it was like I, Virginia or something. I don't talk about myself that much. <laughs> it would just be for myself to be like, oh, yeah, I did that thing. That was cool. So, I'm just saying, if I were to go to Antarctica, I wouldn't shut up about it for decades. That's because you don't shut up whenever you do the slightest difficult thing. <laughs> That's a very good point. Like, look at this look at this hard thing i did i tried sushi today which you wouldn't even do <laughs> you're more likely to get me to antarctica than to eat sushi wow welcome to s class the highest tier in podcasting with me today is the king of ice it's the emperor penguin himself it's robert i am also very well traveled <laughs> <laughs> that could have been my epithet today. <laughs> yes, I recently went on a trip to New Jersey, so I'm farthest, a very well-traveled, seasoned person. The farthest of distances. Uh, Robert, give me a penguin name. Uh, there's the Gentoo penguin. You could be the Gentoo. And I am your host, the Gentoo penguin, Justin. <laughs> or the macaroni penguin. I was also partial to the macaroni penguin. Robert, can you drop us a penguin fact before we begin? Um, No. <laughs> <laughs> I believe there are 16 species of penguin. Beautiful. Okay, so... That might so, be wrong. <laughs> we'll fact check that later. Well, you know what? The comments will fact check for us. <laughs> uh, we're going to start off with our Shonen recap. We have a couple of series that we want to chat about. Robert, can you tell us the latest with Ruri Dragon? Uh, well, Ruri Dragon doesn't exist anymore, actually. <laughs> we got about five... Solid slice of life trapters in before the author realized that this was physically destroying his body. And now Rory Jorgen is on indefinite hiatus. It's not even that good. It's not even solid. No, I know this is like such a hot take. Everybody loves it. But I I know it's a slice of life, but there's especially nothing happening in this. There's no slice. Like, it's just it's just life. It's boring life as a dragon. And it also feels like everybody likes her too easily. So it doesn't really feel like there's any real conflict it's like oh i just lit my classmates hair on fire but everybody still loves me isn't that storytelling 101 like you need like a conflict for the main character to overcome like the hero's journey there's just really no tension I and I, once again it. i know it's a slice of life well the author has dropped it too so i wouldn't worry about that <laughs> i was gonna see if you had any like spicy hot takes about it in the next in the last two to three chapters that i missed i don't even know what it's up to i mean <laughs> they went to a cafe are you anticipating? And then the author quit. <laughs> are you anticipating its return or you're like, I don't give a shit? No, I don't care. I really don't care. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's unfortunate that the author got sick this quickly, which probably says there's something else, you know, underlying going on. And I hope the author turns out okay, but I really don't care about the series. Well, D 
Do you know what you do care about, surprisingly? What's that? Aliens area. Oh my god, I love Aliens area. You see, I think this is the biggest hot take, is that we hate Rory Dragon and actually love Aliens area. Dude, I don't want to be that guy, but I thought it looked great from the beginning. I love you, it. You, you did call it early on, but... <laughs> If you want Slice of Life, the last two chapters of Aliens Area have been pure Slice of Life, and they've been fantastic. They had one chapter about immigration. They had one chapter... What was the other chapter about? The parking ticket. Like the the guy that... (laughs) I wasn't expecting him to be like a beat cop. I was expecting him to like chainsaw man his way through new aliens. I know, that's why I love this. It's so casual. I love the... um... I texted, we texted about it a little bit, the the little demon princess or alien princess who looks oh, like right. Ramona yeah. from She Gash really looks like a straight out of Gash Bell. She was, she was awesome. Like he's like, picks her up and she starts biting his face and he's like, <laughs> the little octopus guy's like, that's how she shows her affection. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I really expected to hate this from the moment I heard the name of the series, but I've been really enjoying it. A surprising, maybe top 30, top 40 I mean, we have a lot of series this year, but it's. I think it's going to get at least in the middle of our... I think it might crack our top 25 Whoa. anime manga of the year. We'll I see, you know, we'll see, what we'll things look like in off. December, but I've really been enjoying it so far. And I've read a lot of garbage this year, too, so... Yeah, yeah, There's there's been a lot of smut, but you like the <laughs> smut, so we'll see. <laughs> there is one thing I would say about it is that I don't like um, the Kane guy, the mentor guy. I don't like when he fights. Like, it's kind of boring, a lot going on. Yeah, which is why I'm hoping they're leaning away from the battle aspect a little bit. I think they're going to need to get it right at some point, Mm -hmm. but I don't mind it taking a slower pace. Yeah, there's something about him that feels a little bit tropey, I think, is what's bothering me. I think he feels very tropey, I think. And thus far, he hasn't really faced any sort of adversity. So, you know, it just seems like he's auto win button. Yeah, and there's, there's something with the execution of him teleporting super speed. Like, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel cool. No, I, I agree with you there. I do like his design overall, though. Yeah. But I, I think his execution him. isn't perfect. I yeah. think he can be salvaged, though. Absolutely. I, I think so, too. Like I don't hate him inherently, but I, I just want them to play with him a little bit more. I'm with you. All right. The The last one we're going to chat about is Blue Box. I'm, uh, I'm getting a little sick of Blue Box. I'm going to be honest really? with you. Really? I, because it, it just feels so artificial. Everything about it feels so, like predictable and tropey to such an extreme degree like oh no the prince is sick you have to take over <laughs> and now you're gonna have to figure out how to not kiss me with kinatsu senpai in the audience uh dude i'm kind of loving it <laughs> the, the spice levels like this is like my little bit of smut that i'm enjoying um and also we, we got to see chinitsu senpai in a maid cafe outfit. i'm like this is fan service but i think it's adorable I just, I think I feel like it's so insulting to Hina at this point, because it's just rubbing in the this, fact this, that she okay. has no chance. This is this is really what you needed to say. <laughs> this is the real reason why you're not happy with it. I, I, I just feel like we're not even trying to hide the fact that Hina's going to get absolutely wrecked at some point very soon. If Hina doesn't get wrecked and there's like a fucking heel turn here, you're going to love this. I will call this one of the greatest manga of all time, yes. <laughs> Not, I, it might surpass Kunjiki no Gash Bell for me if that, Hina wins the Taiki Bowl. That's how confident you are that it's not going to happen. There's zero chance that Hina wins. I, I'm not, which is why this feels like such an artificial love triangle. Because like I get it, like we know that these are the two main characters. Hina's the third wheel, but like in other series, you at least feel like maybe there's going to be some other arc between the secondary girl or the secondary boy and this you straight up know there's not going to happen nothing's going to happen you, you know that's how i felt when they first introduced how that hina was in love with taiki but i feel like the tension has been building in a good way for the two of them i think i just have like my future sight so so powerful that i know how this is going to end and i just can't enjoy the moment i i'm, I'm enjoying the journey even if it's going to play out the way we think it's going to play out Personally, Taiki probably won't get either of them because they're the Shonen Jump <laughs> He doesn't deserve either of them, to be honest. Taiki's a good lad, you know? No, nah, Glasses Kun should have both on one arm each. <laughs> what is so good about Glasses Kun? He's very pragmatic. I, I will be upset if, like, Glasses Kun gets Hina and he gets Shinitsu and then it just ends up being really generic. Which... That's exactly what's going to happen. We'll see. We'll see. I, I have my hopes. I hope my hopes still. Okay. I finished Baki since the last time. Oh my god, I forgot about Baki. <laughs> It's been about a month since we, since we talked. And, and? I, I would like to recount a few items. 
I enjoyed it overall. Um, this was, again, I only watched the season three of the anime, which came out a few years ago. And this is the one where the five criminals from across the world simultaneously, without communication, come to Japan to come fight Baki. It's like um, a magnet. Sort of, yeah. And there ends up being this event organizer, this fight organizer says, you five criminals, I have brought five of my best fighters to fight you guys, except it turns the whole thing on its head. He's like, we're not going to fight in this dome. You guys can fight at any time, anywhere. No rules. So I would like, be very upset if I paid all that money for tickets to this event. And then the MC just says, no, no by no, the no, way, no. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no crowd. This is just like, okay. they all happen to gather. <laughs> and um, so these these criminals are like insane. Like one of them starts losing. He, he vomits a grenade like mm-hmm, he's been mm-hmm. hiding in his stomach to like throw at his opponent. That makes um, sense to me. These guys are so crazy. There's another guy who has like uh, a bomb. He has like an armor on his chest and then a bomb on the outside of the armor. And if he clicks his finger a certain way, it'll just explode. If he, So whenever he starts losing a fight, he'll just fucking like detonate himself. It sounds like they all just cheat. Yeah, they all cheat. And then they're like, they have this ego problem where they're like, we've never lost a fight before. But they just cheat every <laughs> single time. They're like you. Um, I would like to recount two things, if that's okay with you. Of course. Be my okay. guest. So... At one point, these five criminals are kind of going gangbusters. Like, they're, they're fucking things up. And the Japanese police is like, we need help. So they talk to some of the foreign countries. And the Americans are like, we have this prisoner who is actually captures other prisoners. So we zoom into the middle of the desert in Arizona behind, like, 15 steel gates. Uh, you get to the final gate that opens up. And it's this beautiful like shag rug carpet with fine paintings and sculptures and behind that is like this gigantic like you remember the fish that carries patrick star into the arena when he goes to fight spongebob <laughs> of course. he looks like this. he's like this gigantic black guy who's like literally a square because of how fucking jacked he is and his name is biscuit oliva and that's our antagonist <laughs> no this is the prisoner who captures other prisoners oh it's the for prisoner fun. bounty hunter <laughs> he's the prisoner bounty hunter and he lives in like the nicest penthouse suite that you'd find in new york inside of a prison cell inside of he, a prison that he chooses to leave whenever he wants like the the japanese cop who's coming to meet him he's like hey do you want a uh, champagne or beer it's a local beer but like it's still pretty good it doesn't um, really sound like he's in prison no, he, he just likes having the title as the most free <laughs> prisoner. And, like, this dude has no martial arts skill. But he's just so strong that nothing, no martial arts doesn't matter. Him. Like, one, at one point, this guy, this criminal shoots him, like, with a shotgun from point-blank range. And he just flexes. Like, it pierces his skin. He just flexes. And then the bullets fall out. And then he goes home. He kills the guy. He goes home and eats, like, 50 steaks. And he heals and is at full health again. I can't be good for his heart. Biscuit Oliva is like the coolest guy ever. <laughs> Somebody's gonna die at like forty. No, he's he's doing great. Um, and there's one more instance I'd like to recount. So, Baki has a girlfriend, and he's about to lose his virginity to his girlfriend, and his girlfriend's like kind of like hugging him from behind, and he's about to turn around to like face her, and when he turns around to face her, his father is standing behind her, <laughs> saying, "You better do it all day and all night." <laughs> and do it right and he's like what are you doing here dad is she also built like a like a cube no she's a normal girl so she doesn't have like scary terrifying hideous muscles like he does sometimes they zoom in her zoom in on her in a weird way and like this girl is horrifyingly ugly but she's not supposed to be (laughs) it's just the art (laughs) it's just the art um so those were the two instances of or three instances of baki i just wanted to share with you because you're never going to read it or watch it no i was about to say i don't don't think i'm sold yet i don't don't think i will be to you but i just think (laughs) it's just so ridiculous and uh i think i'm gonna go backwards in time and read the first parts of baki and then go further is it like jojo where you can just skip around in parts and then everybody gets angry that you part skipped i don't know how it works in baki but I, I got the gist of it. <laughs> you got the gist of it. It's not that deep. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, tell me about Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2. Oh, man. I've been oh, looking no. forward to this for 10 years. No. And I just don't really love what they did with the animation. It just it doesn't look the same. Oh. And it does, definitely does not look better. And that is a major bummer. Is it a stylistic thing or is it an effort thing? Uh, I really don't know. 
I I definitely think it's probably a little from column A, a little from column B. Um, and also, I think the wind has been taken out of my sails a bit with this series because apparently the light novel ending had like one of the worst endings to anything ever in the history of ever. And I'm I'm worried that if the anime is adapting the light novels instead of the manga, because the manga is not over yet, and the manga I think might be going in a different direction. But oh, then I'm like, okay. what is what is my reasoning for watching this anime when I know the ending is going to be this absolute dumpster fire? Interesting. Okay. You, it doesn't uh, even look good. A bad ending really breaks your heart. Like, it, it totally stops you in its tracks. <laughs> this is this is beyond a bad ending. Okay. I think it would have been better if everyone died than what the ending they ended up doing. Because you you have a bunch of the manga volumes for the last I have volumes. every manga volume released, yeah. I love Devil's Part-Timer. The manga is still fantastic to what I'm up to. Now, I don't know how much of the light novels the manga has covered, though, so I don't know what I'm in for. Is it entertaining? Is it funny? The series? Yeah, I love it. No, uh, the anime that's come out so far. Uh, There's been a few good moments, but overall, I I don't know. There's just something about it. It feels slow, too. Okay. And Pacing-wise. When you said the animation's kind of shitty, is it like, are we getting PowerPoint dynamic zoom, or are we just getting, like something different yeah i i mean we're getting like you know the still faces uh, the paneling you know things like that where it's just not very there's not a lot of motion you know sorry to hear that that's not i'm great. majorly bummed out but i will watch the whole season of course because i do hey, love this series you and johnny have been waiting for this for like eight years or yeah i, I think the been. original season came out in 2013 or something and it was so good season one it was Who's who's winning right now? Angel son or big big booby Kohai? Uh definitely well, she's not an angel actually, but regardless, it feels like Emmy's got the upper hand right now. Okay. But she I mean Chiho works at McDonald's and Emmy is basically the queen of a universe. Okay, fair. So I mean, you know. <laughs> the, the fact that uh Shiro, right? Yes. Uh the fact that she's Chiyo. putting up a fight Chio, excuse me. The yes. fact that Chio is putting up a decent fight against the queen of the universe? says something about her i mean she really only has one thing that gives her the upper hand <laughs> and apparently that's what the devil is into you would think that the queen of the universe could just like make her breast bigger or something i mean she has a magical sword but you know she can only do so much that creates armor as well but limitations no. everyone has their limitations yeah. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> uh okay i read zom 100 bucket list of the dead I, I mentioned this to you. Have you have you read it at all? Not yet. Uh, I am planning to jump into it, though. Okay. So I've heard about this a uh, while ago, but Right Stuff was having this crazy sale where they were selling, like, bundles of the whole thing for, like, 25 bucks for three volumes. And I was like, I've heard about this. Maybe I'll check it out. And it's about a boy. I think his name is Akira. And he's super excited to go to work and start his new job and make friends and fall in love. And then he realized he enters what they call a black company in Japan. And I think we have similar things in America where he's just working like 24 seven. And like his first day, he works like two overnights. And before he finally goes home and has to get five hours of sleep and go back to work again. And he does that for a couple of years. And he's just like, I just want to die. Like he's just <laughs> so depressed. Um, one day he wakes up and there are zombies everywhere. Like people are dying left and right there's like this tense moment where you're like, he's going to freak out. And he's just like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm so glad that I don't have to go to work today. <laughs> he's and been he's so freed. Excited. He's been freed. He's like, this is the greatest day of my life. So he like takes the day to clean his apartment. He, <laughs> he like rides his bike, um, zooming through a bunch of zombies to, to go to Seven Eleven. He's like, I'm just going to drink beer all day. And it inspires him. He's like, I'm going to turn into zombie too one day. And I'm going to make a bucket list of all the things I want to do before I die. But why don't the zombies go after him? They do go after him, but he's like zooming. They're kind of like the slow walker zombies. Uh, right, he's right. He's like zooming through uh, on his bicycle. At one point, someone steals his bicycle and he, he steals a Harley Davidson. He's like, nice. This is a, I'm going to add this to my bucket list. I, I get the right <laughs> motorcycle. Like, so he's just like have, living his best life for the first time. How would you uh, classify this as a genre? Oh, uh, it's. I would say it's like shonen shonen comedy slice of life okay so so like the shonen aspect is like he goes on an adventure with a few other people that's the adventure actually actually the shonen part is like sometimes he has to fight zombies and then the slice of life is like or the comedy part is like 
it's just a really funny interpretation on the world ending. Right. <laughs> just enjoying the fact the world is ending so you don't have to work anymore. Yeah, I, I really love it. I think it's somehow, despite being like supposed to be a comedy, it's very inspirational. Um, there's one arc where there's like a villain that's so poorly written. But besides that, it's been so good. And um, I'm up to date for what Dave Scanlated. I think you'll really love it. How many chapters in is it? So this is the shitty part. It's scanlated up to 23 chapters. But then I think because Viz started doing an official release, the guy stopped scanlating it. And I think there's uh, 35 or more chapters out. Right, right, right. Um, but I, I would recommend checking it out. I think I will jump into this. Rob, I'm going to flip it. I, I have myself up next. But why don't you start us off on the video games and talk about Raiva Raiva. Oh, man. It is definitely a JRPG from the 90s. <laughs> In the best or worst way possible. I uh, it depends because you got you got seven different stories in it from seven different time frames and i don't know if like when you complete them if there's overlap but right now there's zero overlap Ooh. some of them are good some of them are atrocious Ooh. and one of them was basically just six fights and it was over in 40 minutes um another one was just you were like a caveman, and that <laughs> was the worst three and a half hours of my life I've ever spent. I just kept waiting for it to be over, and it just wouldn't end, and it was so boring. Um, the other, another one I did was the cowboy one. That one was a lot of fun, but once again, I, I don't know. It's it's fine. We were I pretty hyped the, on this during I get Nintendo. the appeal of it. Yeah, no, we we were excited for it. And I do get the appeal of it because I guess the thought process is that none of them overstay their welcome. But at the same time, I feel no, I don't know, motivation because I know it's going to be over in an hour anyway, like each little story. Do you foresee these converging into one timeline and fighting one big bad or it's just seven mini arcs unrelated? I can't see how organically they'd merge into a cohesive story. I could see possibly that there's one final boss and then you decide which ones you want to fight with, something like that. But I don't think you're getting much story cohesion with it. That sounds terrible. Like, why didn't they just keep it as seven different stories? And like I said, I you know, I'm speculating. I don't know what's going to happen after I finish the seven stories. But overall, I just don't feel a lot of motivation within each thing. And it just switch. I'm just curious. Like, does it when you finish one story, does it just switch? Like, no, 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 segue? no you, you can choose which one you do. But like, in any does it order. give you like a segue of why these are all in one game console, no. like one game no. cartridge? Not at all. What the hell? So definitely not worth the fifty then. Uh, no, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna finish it because it really doesn't seem like it's gonna take too long. I've already finished four stories and I only played for about four or five hours. Mm. Um. But I don't really love it. That doesn't sound great. I, I kind of want to like take a look at it if I could borrow it when you finish. Um, but it doesn't sound fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer. Okay. Uh, I have started playing Mario and the Rabbids. Uh, this oh, that game's like four dollars now. It's like ten. It's the lowest it's ever dropped. <laughs> yeah. Too. And this game has been like this is one of those games that. It feels too good to be true because it's always $15, even though it's like full price $60. It hasn't been $60 for like seven years. And no. um, people are always like, buy this game. I'm like, why is this so cheap? Like, why do they keep trying to sell this to me? So I, I have avoided it. And then $10, I was like, it's too cheap to not pick up. Um, and it's really fun. It's I'm only like an hour in. And I like how they kind of try to create like a story aspect in the beginning where they have like the, the machine. That I know the, the opening cutscene for it is pretty fun. Yeah, and the animation's really strong yeah. considering this is one of the oldest Switch games, right? Yeah, I think it came out within the first, definitely the first year. Yeah. Uh, maybe the first, like, four or five months. Yeah, so I, I was really surprised by it, and I don't think I've played a game like this. The, the closest thing I can think of is there used to be a game on the computer called Paintball Lemmings. Do you remember Lemmings? <laughs> I remember Lemmings, yes, of course. <laughs> There's a spinoff where you could strategically like move your Lemmings to shoot each other, and you had to like shoot all the enemy Lemmings with paintballs. That sounds like Worms. I don't know Worms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's Paintball Lemmings. <laughs> We're just throwing out a bunch of obscure titles right now. But um, you, you've played this, right? Yeah, I got it when it was around 
twenty five dollars, I think. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It seems really easy. Does it get to a point of difficulty? Yes, it actually gets incredibly difficult at some point. Okay. Uh, Where you I, you'll have to like replay fights like two or three times to figure out the way to maximize your odds of winning. It, it does okay. get difficult. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm excited. It's kind of like it's kind of like chill for your brain because you're not like constantly button smashing. You're really just moving around trying to think how to solve the puzzle, which is the opposite of the next game I'll talk about. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if all the I don't remember if all the characters were unlocked from the start, but there are more characters. No, you only have Peach and Luigi from the beginning. Okay, so yeah, you, you can play around with different combinations of characters, which adds a little bit of strategy. It's fun. And they have different aspects to them, because right now, Peach and Luigi, I think, are the same. Yeah, I mean, they have some different differences, and I think you unlock more weapons and things like that, okay. so you can really uh, customize things a little bit more. Okay, it's, cool. it's really fun. It's good. Robert, tell us about Xenoblade 3. Uh, so I started it this morning, so I I haven't done a lot. <laughs> um, it's it's definitely going to be Xenoblade. It's going to be. It doesn't feel you know too different presentation wise from the other Xenoblade games. Um, it definitely feels a little bit more dramatic. Not to say that dramatic is bad, but Xenoblade Chronicles Two was so like awful anime tropes that made you cringe throughout playing it. This I can tell is not going to have any of that, which okay. is a relief. So you think you're drifting more towards Xenoblade 1 or 2? Oh, it's definitely... I don't know about gameplay-wise, but I think story-wise, it's definitely leaning more in the direction of 1. Is there still the infamous, terrible Scottish accent? I already have it on Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even try to play it in English this time. Okay. I played the first like two or three hours of Xenoblade 2 in English, and that was the first time I was playing a game where I said... If I can't switch this to another language, I don't think I can continue playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! dub. The Yu-Gi-Oh! dub is fantastic. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> Shut your whore mouth. <laughs> uh, Robert, as someone who knows literally nothing about Xenoblade, how would you describe like the, the entire Xenoblade Chronicles like in a paragraph? Oh, I would say that as somebody that knows zero about Xenoblade Chronicles, you still probably know more about it than those of us that have played it. <laughs> because I I don't think I'm a moron, but I lose track of these stories incredibly quickly. Is it like a magical world with monsters? Like, give, give me a little something. Uh, no, it's more so just I, in this one, basically everybody is born to die in the sense that like you're literally born to be a soldier. And if you don't kill people your life force drains quicker. So, like, the state of the universe is constant war. This feels a little edgy for you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely got that edge, but, like, the gameplay of Xenoblade and the world and the music is always so enjoyable that I don't even really care about the story too much anyway. And I know the story is why most people play these games. I just kind of like running around in the big open worlds, listening <laughs> to the fucking bops, battling giant gorillas. It's a good time. I think that's a good segue into the opposite of that, which is Shin Megami Tensei Five. <laughs> oh yeah, not, so, that does not have a very visually stunning world. <laughs> so the the game I plugged in like thirty hours last time we talked. I was like kind of addicted to it, and the best aspect of the game is com capturing or bribing monsters to join your team and then merging them into some fucked up thing, and then fighting hard boss battles. Worst part about this game, besides the fact that the story is kind of meh, is like the fact that the setting is so bad. It's like this desert world. Okay, fine. It's the apocalypse. I get it. Um, but it has no life to it, which is kind of the point. I, it more feels like it's lazy. But more, even worse than that, I could, I could live with that. It's the fact that you just want to fight mo new monsters and get to places, but you can't because there's a cliff in your way and you have to go around it in a certain way and you're kind of constantly running around just trying to find the route to advance the story um and there are these tower monsters these tower monsters that you have to beat in order to see the full map so you can't get to them because they block the map and i can't get over this ledge and so many times i'm like fuck i wish i was playing breath of the wild so i could climb this <laughs> right bitch. or i or i wish i could um float across this ledge the other ledge just because i'm trying to 
get to the objective and fight more monsters. And it's thrilling when you have a boss monster that you have to lose three times before you figure out how to beat them. But I'm stuck right now because I'm stuck in a map where I'm just like, fuck, I've been running around for two hours and monsters keep trying to attack me and they're just getting in the way. It's like when you're in like a uh, victory road and you just get attacked by gold bats all day. It's yeah. And at that point you just, you kind of want to just play the game. Like, yeah. and you wouldn't, you also wouldn't mind the fact that you're getting lost if the world didn't look so bland and boring. Exactly. Yeah. Like I get lost in breath of the wild all the time. I'm just having a grand time. Like, Oh my God, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Right. Um, it also doesn't sound like there's anything to discover if you get lost. The the only plus side on discovery is that in each section of the world, there's these like gigantic boss monsters that live in the overworld. And you're like, Holy shit, that looks crazy. And then like, occasionally you can fight, you can fight them. And then you do like, this much damage to them like it's like trying to slash like a giant with like a toothpick and you're like okay i'm gonna run now so you get all the way there and then you can't do anything you can't do anything but it's cool to look at and you kind of just like run away from it would you Um, say you've hit a wall with this game i've hit a bit of a wall like i could i haven't played it in about two or three weeks and i could if you wanted to check it out i could lend it to you because it really is fun i plugged 30 hours so far Um, i got zeno blade I'm, i'm set for the rest of the summer yeah, I, I think I, I want to get back to it because I want to beat the fucking game and get the strongest monster team. But it's it sucks that I'd have to like look up a tutorial to just find out what secret path I need to climb yeah. up to get to the tower to get to the objective. Like, and then at that point, it's you know, yeah, what's the motivation? Yeah, it's fine. It, it was it was a good game. I'll maybe pick it back up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's everything we have for video games. Now, Rob, it's time for your favorite section. Is this the Big News Morgan's breaking news section? It's time for Big News Morgan's breaking news. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you got this month? <laughs> we have the new Slam Dunk trailer. Have you seen it? Uh, once again, it's not really much of a trailer as much as it is a teaser. I don't know how many Slam Dunk teasers we're going to get before they actually show us something that's going to happen. We got eight seconds of animation this time, though. <laughs> I'm not satisfied. What, what are your thoughts on it? Because there is something to talk about there. You, I really have no thoughts. I still f- just feel frustrated that they've been teasing this for what feels like seven or eight months. Well, it's and... 3D animated, which is what I was talking about. Right. Uh, Are you concerned? Because I thought it looked pretty good for 3D. I thought it seemed at the very least interesting. I, It didn't feel like it, it screamed 3D animation like some things do. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. It doesn't look like 2016 Berserk. Or... Right, exactly. So, and this is a one-off movie, so I'd imagine they're putting a solid budget into it, so that maybe it won't look as you know typically rough three D as usual. Do you know the difference between why they do two D and three D? Uh, is it money? Yeah. So, like three D, you just need to create like a rig of like a human. Let's say you just kind of move the rig, and you kind of like this is my understanding. You kind of just capture each still frame that you've created of the rig so it's much easier because you don't have to redraw every time 2d i'm literally drawing a kagi then i had to draw him again taking one step then i had to draw right, him right. the ball so i just spent like five hours drawing like 20 drawings and that's assuming i'm fast <laughs> so it's tedious it's it's very tedious time and consuming, time consuming and, and yeah a lot more skill skilled labor i don't know it, it kind of felt like it kind of felt like a video game to me yeah i could see that I'm excited I, still. I'm honestly. interested, but it's, you know, I still want to know what it's about. I'm trying to figure out whether I'd be more excited if it was a Sano match or if it was like a new school torn summer school tournament or something. I feel like I'd, I need, I need new. I need new. Yeah. I think new also. I don't need a retread of what I already know what happened. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one, one more thing about Slam Dunk. Um, so I think Takehiko Inoue, the author, uh, recently got an Instagram, and he just loves drawing the fat guy, Sakuragi's friend with the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> he just draws. So I got. I got to look up his Instagram. Him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> look him up, and it's just first of all, he's just like my favorite artist, and it's beautiful the way he draws. But he always just chooses to draw this fat dude with the big lips and the glasses. Why? I don't it's know. It's that he's like easy to draw. Maybe he's definitely the most cartoony of all the characters. Yeah. But he just like really loves it. Like it's the most detailed folds in the clothing. 
and he does such a good job coloring because now he's doing digital. Uh, I, I just think it's hilarious. Though. Oh my god! I just went on his Instagram. It's literally every picture. Yeah, and if you click on his story, if it's still there, I think I checked it yesterday. He has like a full drawing process of him drawing the fat guy. <laughs> it's literally the last five pictures are the fat guy. I don't know. How oh my god! There's so many. <laughs> I don't know who convinced him to start an Instagram, but he's making the most of it. Clearly, oh, this is this is great. <laughs> Okay, uh, Kaiju number eight is getting an anime. Talk to me, Rob. Uh, I recently caught up on Kaiju number eight after you told me about it and gave it the recommendation. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Okay. And then it hits kind of a pacing issue where it just slows down and it feels like we're not really getting anywhere. Right. And we're not really, until like the last, I think maybe four or five chapters, we weren't really seeing any of the other characters. Mm-hmm. which was kind of frustrating. Um, I don't know. I-, I liked it overall, but I definitely think I'm not going to follow this bi-weekly or whatever, whenever it comes out. I need to read this in bulk. Did, would you say what I said about like the shonen tropiness is accurate? Oh, absolutely. Um, and there's definitely a refusal to kill characters. I, I think there's been a few moments where Oh, it like could have side, killed somebody, yeah, and it it would have probably added a nice emotional twist. And I don't really like killing characters to begin with, but I feel like for a universe where there's constantly monsters trying to kill everyone, the fact that nobody's really died yet is a little bit, you know, unrealistic. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think my biggest problem is I don't feel that much. I felt a big attachment to the characters in the beginning. But with all these new side boys, like, I don't feel much attachment. Right, because I don't think they've gotten any development, which is yeah. the problem. I also like also, these old guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I always love the old guys. But our main character, what I liked about him at first is that he's, what, 33 years old mm-hmm. and, you know, struggling through life and still trying to achieve his G- dream. But the more you read it, the more it's just a typical 12-year-old shonen jump, you know, main character that you're telling us is 33 years old. That's he a doesn't great really point. feel 33 years old. He's kind of becoming Deku. Right, exactly. He's like, I don't have the skills, but I'm going to try hard and I'm going to be better. Yeah, there's nothing about him that makes him 30 other than us being told he's old. They did a good job of it in the middle where he starts using his skills as a garbage man or janitor to like point out the weaknesses of the monsters. Cause he, he yeah, absolutely. I think that was great because it showed like his experience and you know how he's been around different aspects of Kaiju for so long, but now it just feels like, you know, power of friendship. I'm going to be there for my friends, things like that. And we're going to teach you Kung Fu now. Yeah. Oh oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, so you can be both a monster and good at Kung Fu. Yeah. It's I do fine. like it. I do like it. it. It's enjoyable. I'll read it in bursts. And it's I'll definitely solid. watch the anime. Yeah. What do you have on the anime release date? Did they come up with any animation of it or teaser? I don't know, honestly, on that. I'd okay. imagine it's 2023, though. Okay, gotcha. Last piece of news is Crunchyroll buys Right Stuff Anime. This is not good. What are your thoughts on this? It's not good. It's just it's further emphasizing a monopoly of you know, the anime industry in America. I think Sony already owns Crunchyroll. They already merged Crunchyroll with what? Funimation. Funimation. And now they have right stuff absorbed into Crunchyroll and they've already, I think, eliminated, you know, not that I buy it, but all the The 18, all the 18 plus stuff is gone. It's you already can't order it anymore. Really? Which I think is really unfortunate that you had this website where you could basically order any manga or anime that's been released in america that you want and now that's all gone that's shitty i i did notice like i read the faq and that was the only thing they're like please refer to this other policy about our aero manga and stuff like that i didn't know they eliminated it already and i i just think that's incredibly unfortunate and sony constantly has problems with censorship and this is really just another layer of it is that you're taking away people's options i hope because right stuff has always been the buy at a budget type of place and i hope that sony does not just start hike price uh price hiking right, yeah right um, i mean if you're not getting these volumes for 750 when they cost ten dollars anymore there's no reason to do it and like also, right stuff is like you said i always buy in bulk 
to save money. I'll get, you know, 25, 30 volumes at a time. I know I'm going to wait like three weeks before they come, at but, least. you know, that's fine. If they're getting rid of all the perks, what's the point of the website? Yeah, and it kind of felt like a a mom and pop shop a little bit. I, oh, I absolutely agree with you there, yeah. I hope that they don't kill that vibe. I hope I hope that it doesn't affect most of the bottom line users in the long term. We'll see. I'm not optimistic. <laughs> we'll see. I hope I hope I can keep buying <laughs> my stuff. Okay, that's everything we have for breaking Morgans. No nope. breaking Morgans. It's big news Morgans breaking news. <laughs> big news Morgans breaking news. There we go. Nobody can break Morgans. <laughs> Not in that shell. No, that's a different guy. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't even know anything. Okay. Um, we have an email, Robert. Okay. Is it a good one or is it a terrible one? Like last let's, month. Let's see. <laughs> okay. This email is rapid fire questions. Hi, S-Class. I have a few rapid fire questions for you both. There are five questions, Robert. Okay. Uh, what, how are we going to do it? Are we alternating? Uh, we can both answer them. Okay. Number one, would you rather have a blue eyes white dragon or a Charizard? Like in real life? Yeah. Charizard. I think Charizard has more personality, but blue yeah, eyes is and he's... better. Yeah, but you probably can't tame a blue eyes. At my level, I can tame anything. I have all the badges. So we're both choosing Charizard. Yeah, we're both choosing Charizard. <laughs> I probably couldn't tame a Charizard either. Uh, two. Would you rather love a show that everyone hates or hate a show that everyone loves? Well, my entire life is hating shows that everybody loves. <laughs> <laughs> Do you so, like who you are, Robert? <laughs> oh, no, I hate myself. So I'll go with the other one. Love a show that everyone hates. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. I think I'm similar to you, like when I'm like Jujutsu Kaisen's mid, Demon Slayer's mid. <laughs> I think I like... Do, would I rather be the guy who just pisses everyone off or just be like the fucking weirdo? Like that, that shit would like... That shit was garbage. It's like, really? I thought that was like a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with yeah, love, no. a, love a show everyone hates. It's kind of funny. I'm with you. Absolutely. <laughs> Which straw hat would you want to spend a day with and what would you guys do? Nami. <laughs> what would you guys do? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe just, you know, have a picnic. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Robin has some capabilities with her fruit. <laughs> That's, that's uh yeah i agree okay let's move on to the next question maybe we should change the question what male straw hat would you want to spend a day with yamato <laughs> we're done okay we're moving on i'm surprised you didn't choose chopper oh no i hate chopper i know you like the nice little fuzz on your characters okay <laughs> Between the two of you, which one is Kageyama and which one is Hinata? This one, this one's easy. <laughs> is it? Yeah. What would you say? I'm the Kageyama. I'm the like. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I mean this is this is easy. I'm the stern, always yelling at you, uh, trying to do things the right way, and you're just bouncing around and. Kind I'm of... short and I can jump really high. I mean, yeah, it's easy. that too. And I'm the tall, dark-haired one. <laughs> Both of That's us miserable. with no talent, though. <laughs> Wish we could make it oh, to both of us that can't do it without the other. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was really nice what I no, said. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, our final question is, if you were a character in My Hero Academia, what would the other person's quirk be? So what would your quirk be? What would Justin's quirk be? Uh, uh, it would be the ability to, no matter what the event is, arrive oh. exactly 25 minutes late. <laughs> That's not a quirk. That's just who I am. No, no, no. It is a quirk. As in, like, you would destroy the fabric of time and space if you try to arrive any earlier or any later. Can I, like, predict things 25 minutes ahead of, like, ahead of time? No. Oh, no. <laughs> you cannot. I thought I got, like, a very specific future sight ability. I'm just coincidentally late. Yes, correct. Damn. I thought you were going to give me some sort of, like, snot-based power. Like, some sort of allergy-based <laughs> quirk that's nasty. No, you just destroy the fabric of time and space. Um, what would your ability be? The The generic one would be, like, give springing, springs in your legs, and you just hop around. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, but I maybe... think you want something more insulting. Yeah, I think that your your quirk would be that you are able to pinpoint someone's, like, mental weakness, so you know how to insult them the perfect way. <laughs> Not like a trauma-based thing, but just like, how can I insult them in like a shady way? <laughs> and uh, it's really distracting. 
I think it would be the thing that like makes everybody else laugh, and the person themselves has to laugh, or else they'd be seen as like overly <laughs> can't handle a joke. But like deep down, it cuts them so deep. <laughs> yeah, you'd you'd be horrible to fight, or you'd be like the best support character because you're just like yelling vitriol while the, the main fighter is trying to attack them, and they just get distracted and their soul gets hurt. <laughs> I like that one. I think that would be fun. Thanks for the podcast, Seto Kaiva. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> thank you. We probably should have chosen no. Blue Eyes White Dragon. I'm so, we're we're going to feel that wrath later. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was our August anime video game haul. Um, Rob, anything you'd like to say before we close out to our wonderful listeners? Uh, going back to the One Piece question. I would like to choose. <laughs> give me Sanji. Just an afternoon of getting fed well. Not a bad answer. Right? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>